Hello friends! If you're new, welcome to my channel. If you're coming back, welcome back. I really do appreciate you. Today I'm going to be talking about the origins of Satan. Reconciliation to Rome. Not much else I need to say. Let's get on with the video. Don't forget I now have a merch store. It's on my website. Link in the description. I get a percentage of whatever you spend, so you will be helping out the channel as well as getting something for your money. So why don't you go over there and see if there's anything you want. Empress Julia Mamiya, Severus's mother, invited Origen to court to discuss reconciliation of Christians to Rome. Rumors circulated at the time that the emperor had erected statues of Jesus, Abraham, Socrates, and other holy men in his private palace. Unfortunately, a peasant from Thrace, Maximinus, assassinated Severus, taking the hope of peace between Christians and Rome away. Many of Origen's close friends including his rich patron, were arrested, though at the time Origen was not. After Maximinus' death, a fight for the throne ensued, and Gordian III won. Gordian II left the Christians alone. However, he was assassinated by his own soldiers after only four years on the throne, and he was succeeded by his chief general, Philip the Arabian. Philip the Arabian succeeded him, and may very well have been a Christian, since at least three people saw him doing public penance for that murder, that is, the assassination of Gordian, imposed by the Bishop of Antioch on Easter. Decius then killed Philip, seized power, and initiated more aggressive persecution against the Christians. This time, however, Origen, who was in his 60s, was arrested and also tortured. The governor hoped that Origen would recant, but he never did. Origen knew that the opposition to Christianity was based on more than just prejudice because he had read a tract years before his arrest. It charged that Christians were atheists and that they masked a rebellion against society and government. Celsus wrote this tract around 180 CE and cited their refusal to sacrifice to the gods as the basis for the charge of not only atheism, but also that if everyone adopted their attitude, the law would literally mean nothing. The Christians refused to obey certain laws, and Celsus argued that if this was allowed to stand, it would, quote, destroy legitimate authority and return the world to chaos, end quote, bringing down the Roman Empire and her emperor. Origen's reply was that Christians formed associations against the devil's laws, much like people would form an alliance to kill a tyrant. He does not, however, identify imperial law with the devil's law. So basically, the Christians picked the fight with Rome and Rome finished it. No surprise then, the origin considered all laws and people that were against Christianity as demon-inspired. But Christians, he asserted, 
would gain victory in the end because Jesus died to destroy the demons and the chief of the demons. Origen wrote that the spread of Christianity, despite almost universal opposition, proved that an unknown force was at work in the world. Of course, it proves no such thing. What it does prove is the power of belief and indoctrination. Origen even admits that Christianity spread mainly among the illiterate peoples. But he has an excuse for that. He says it only does that because the illiterate by necessity outnumber the literate. Maybe not origin. Have you ever thought that maybe the literate people were the smarter, more intelligent people and just wrote it off as hogwash? He wrote, quote, Our Jesus despised for being born in a rural village, end quote. Wait, did he just admit that Jesus was not born in the royal city of David, Bethlehem? In addition, he identifies Jesus as being the son of a poor laboring woman, not the son of God. He also wrote that what proved Jesus as something divine and sacred was that the Jews had suffered a long time because of him. What? How does this in any way prove anything? Of course, Origen thought they suffered because they crucified Jesus, but the Romans crucified him. So, if the suffering of the Jews is God's judgment, what about Christian suffering or the suffering of the innocent? Like so many other Christians, Origen chooses to be inconsistent. However, unlike later Christians, he refused to say that it was God's will. Instead, he wrote that this was inexplicable. He also wrote that this suffering could be due to either human interference or even supernatural interference with the will of God. As a Platonist, Celsus would have found this disturbing because he revered the one God that rules over all. He argued for monotheism as opposed to what he correctly identified as Christian dualism. If one accepts the concept of one God, then they must also accept that all of nature works in accordance with the will of that one God, which is not what Christianity at this time taught. So if monotheism didn't separate Christians and pagans, what did? So if monotheism did not separate pagans and Christians, what did? Principally, paganism asked the person to fulfill obligations and destiny. Piety to pagans met reverent reverencing their family, social, and national responsibilities. For Christians, it was much different. At that time, Christians taught that duty to family, society, and nation were not sacred, and indeed, that these obligations were designed to enslave people to the demons. To Celsus, what made Christians dangerous 
was a blasphemous belief in the devil, that is, inventing an archenemy of God. It is blasphemy, he wrote, to believe in a being who could possibly hinder the great God's ability to do good. By the way, this is also a Jewish belief. Additionally, he accused them of inventing a rebellion in heaven to justify sedition on earth. He criticizes Paul's warnings that Christians not eat food offered to gods because they might commune with demons. 1 Corinthians 10, 20-22 Since demons energize all natural processes, he argued, Christians cannot survive without communing with the demons. Ironically, he agreed with Christians that demons instigated persecution, warning them that just as human rulers take action against those who would subvert their rule, demons will punish those that are insubordinate to them. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, PayPal, and website links are in the description, along with the source that I used for this episode. My store is on my website. Go check it out. Also, please leave comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers the YouTube algorithm. Also, please remember that I choose my comment of the week on my Saturday live streams from my edited content. Remember, I now have a fixed time for Saturday live streams, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, stay safe and goodbye.